Um, all right. So these movies coming out. Okay, Black Widow, Joker, all that stuff. Can we, as a group of people and fans, accept okay movies anymore? A lot of fans accepted Solo, so there's your answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Are we just stopping there? Like, do you, oh, no. I, I want to talk about this on a, a more of like a... Like in terms of a, a superhero movie or just time, generally? We, well, I know what we're more inundated in the superhero movies. Yeah. Uh, the other movies that we don't watch that aren't superhero movies, like the Oscar movies, not very many people care for. Yeah. They're not for everybody. They're for specific groups of people. They're the types of movies that people look at and be like, oh, you didn't, you didn't get it. You just didn't get it. It's the hipster generation. Like, Not even that. Kinda. Just the auteurs that are really like against the superhero thing. And yeah. you're like, you're, we're, the culture's so inundated with super... This is how they sound, apparently. Yeah. They're so <laughs> inundated with superhero movies that you just can't accept raw emotional films. It's like, get out of my face. Yeah. BVS was ahead of its time. It's a masterpiece. It the symbolism like a, was insane. That sounds like an Anthony. Oh, comment. that's my regular voice now. Sorry. That's my regular voice. I just voice. puberty. Right my name's Anthony, and this is how I talk. Welcome. Uh, but yeah, I, I I feel like unless a movie's amazing, like everyone's like, was it amazing? Because uh, if it wasn't, then it's shit. You know, I think a, a lot of people like when you define an amazing movie, I think it, like you automatically go into like the high budgets of like superhero movies and stuff like that. Right now, yeah. I think there's there's a point now where we're kind of like, okay, yeah, we're excited when these come out, but we kind of need a break from them too. Which I think you're you're that's why I'm like leaning towards. I would be kind of okay with an okay movie yeah. um, just cool. because you know you, you in a land in the past like where every movie was an okay movie like how many romantic comedies did we go through in the 90s not oh, enough oh yeah oh my god I love seeing them in the 90s the westerns let's say there was the western era right. back in the day like especially when you were growing up there was tons of them yeah well, yeah, that's true. And like, I mean, we had our sci-fis too back right. then, right? But like, I think nowadays, I think more people are open to the to the okay movies and are kind of okay with it. They're like, you know what? Like, yeah. we don't always need to have box office, like huge, like whatever yeah. winners. I don't know. That's Anthony? just my thought. But Well, like, I feel like if you just, I want to watch a movie. Sometimes I don't want to think about it. Like, I don't want to watch a great movie. Like I saw uh, John Cena's cock blockers movie. Yeah. Like I, it was uh, just blockers. No. It's actually it's actually cock blockers, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. They just don't pout on the poster. Yeah. But it, there's a chicken on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I saw that, and I was like, this like I was watching with my cousin because we just like watching stupid movies like Haunted House and all that crap. So I was yeah, like, yeah. you know what, Matthew, we're gonna watch this shit. We watched it, and we just died laughing because it was just such stupid humor. Watching John Cena do like throw kids through walls and shit. Yeah, like it's just like you know what that was funny. But I, I heard it was it really again. good. Like yeah. I, I, I heard I it was like seen a, it yet, a legitimately but I do good movie. It. Yeah, it was actually like John Cena. Pretty good. Good job, John Cena. But yeah, it was. So for you now, though, like, because you're more in, um, in the era of superheroes, and you're you, the fan base does demand everything to be amazing and at the very top and stuff like that. <coughs> and I've caught myself in that. Yeah. And even when we're going to see a movie, it's like, eh, it looks okay. I may not go see it. As opposed to something where it's like, oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. Then it's not that good, and we're like, that was garbage. Even though maybe it wasn't. Like even thinking back to the Solo, whole DCEU. I'm like, I hated Solo. Well, not hated. I didn't like it at all. Going coming out, but now the more I think about it, I'm like, it was okay. Well, I see it again if it's on TV. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. And it was it was at that fifty percent mark. No. You're probably gonna yeah. say not. It's at that fifty fifty mark. Like it's a five out of ten for me. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. Anything between like even like anything above five is is would be considered good. But now we're just demanding greatness all the time and if it's not it's automatically just garbage and it's happening a lot i want to add in i feel like this is a different discussion for tv shows though because game of thrones oh. amazing i watch game of thrones i yeah. commit walking dead after four seasons of garbage i drop that i'm right. done uh like the other dc shows garbage yeah. I, I just drop shows wwe i'm sorry nick raw i could not commit to it it was so boring i had to drop it yeah are you in the same boat then when it comes to tv like, because I know a lot. Like, you always put at the bar, right? Like, um, for me, was it like Breaking Bad? Right, right. Yeah. And for me, Breaking Bad is I put Breaking Bad above Game of Thrones. Sorry, people. I know it's a different genre, but I put it above Game of Thrones. Well, you guys had like Smallville too. Sorry, he, yeah, I did. You, yeah, yeah, you well, watched. You it. did too, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll I'll always compare shows. Is it as good as this? Is it as good as that? Even if it was just okay, and I'm, I've set the bar so high with something like a Breaking Bad, in my opinion. Yeah, that it's almost 
not giving the show a chance. And yeah, you are right. TV gets that even more so. But because there's more of it. Well, because you have to like actually fully commit. Like you had seven, like you had like 70 hours or 700 hours. How much right. So oh. you had a lot of hours of Game of Thrones to watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if it was garbage, I doubt you would have stuck through like the first two seasons. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I we watched, yeah, the seven seasons, essentially seven weeks we or six weeks. You guys burned through it hard. We went through it quick. Um, but... Yeah, I think what I a lot of people do is they'll take a genre, like a type of TV show, and then they'll compare it to another one in a similar genre. For so, sure. for example, like you say with your superhero shows, like, yeah, like for me, Smallville was my, you know, that's my comparison. Not to yeah. say that Smallville was a great show, but, you know, for me growing up, that nostalgia factor, that's what I'll do. Um, if it's something like, for example, like you said, Spartacus, yeah, I'll compare it to Game of Thrones. For sure, you know, sword like, and sandal, very simple, like kind of similar in terms, similar, yeah, right? Epic, kind of, yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, like you'll find like different genres, and you'll compare those shows to to those, like Suits. If there's another, like, uh, like uh, what's Men. that show, Billions or, or Billions, Mad Men? Yeah, like that's I would compare it to that. Well, like Game of Thrones, like uh, Julian Mitchell commented about Westworld. And if we've watched it yet, I haven't watched it yet, but that's like the new Game of Thrones. Like that's how people are saying it, right? And I want to watch it. I'll try and wa- I'll probably watch it after I. Uh, finish My Hero Academia and be watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but... Right. Like, if you compare a show to something like Game of Thrones, that, like, buys it in because that has the reputation. But for movies, you can't just say, oh, well, it's... The DC is kind of like Marvel because the quality isn't there and a lot of people know it. Uh, well, and, and a lot of it for them, it's, it's quality, it's the people behind the scenes, it's the organization in general and how they're reacting. For you, Game of Thrones-wise, did, did we overhype it? Because I know hype has a lot to do with people's expectations of a tv show or a movie so the when we first started this thing about a week, year ago we it was game of thrones time and we were yeah. in in game of thrones season seven yep. did that taint lower uh, heightened expectations or are you one of those people that are able to just be like i don't care what you guys say i'm like i'm just gonna go in yeah, I mean, I truthfully, when you guys were talking Game of Thrones, I would tune out a lot because, like, I mean, I had no input in it. So a lot of times it was just me, like, you know, how before you see a movie, you don't want to see the the trailers. Right. That's kind of what it was with me when you guys were talking. So I would just kind of tune it out. I mean, I knew you guys liked it. And me and you, we like similar shows. So yeah. when you told me it's a really good one, I'm like, okay, like, I'll see it. But for me, it was just daunting because I'm like, man, that's seven seasons. Like, I am so behind, right? And, you you know, granted, like in the beginning, there was more episodes and then like later on, it kind of tapered off. But yeah. like that was the biggest thing for me. Like, do I really want to start a seven season series? Like, mm-hmm. damn, man. Like if it's two, then you're like, OK, whatever. But um, no, I don't think you guys overhyped it. I think you guys really liked it. And again, I, I it's not like I was paying attention intently and knew what was going on. Yeah. Like I, I, I thought it was a great show. It's one of my favorites. And yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anticipation definitely has a lot to do with it, mm-hmm. um, which then goes into, um, I think it leads into another one that I had. Just real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, like, I feel like the HBO, for me at least, has got that reputation where like they put good shows after good shows. So like, I want to watch Westworld. Mm. Uh, Watchmen is coming out, which is a DC property. But it's so a I'm, TV DC property. It's a different yeah. ballgame. But it's on HBO. No filter. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to check it out because honestly, like an episode or two of Watchmen, I've been interested in it. Yeah. But if it's going to be like a crazy good show, I said, you know what? I'll check it out just because it's HBO. Sopranos in the like nine, eight, late 90s and yeah. stuff. Like that was like the original kind of like. HBO has definitely set the standard. And it's something that we talked about last week where it's HBO versus Netflix versus some other ones. Um, and someone did comment on on like the Purge, st- uh, the Purge show, one of the videos yeah. that we put on, on YouTube. And they were, um, what was I going to say? They commented on it being on Netflix. Business-wise, yeah, Netflix has way more people inundated in it. More people are going to watch it. But HBO is just the standard, still the standard, yeah. I think. And I don't think people can should forget that. Because when HBO does a show, it is boom, yeah. up here. I have never heard of a bad HBO show. You know what? I, I I've sure seen is, but... I've seen well. Entourage was an HBO show. It was really good early on. Yeah. Then it kind of fell off a bit. But yeah, but it was because of this character right here. Piven. Yeah, exactly. Like he was the one that was actually holding it all together.